Hello, this is Greg from SharePoint Maven. And today's video will be a bit different from my other videos on the channel. I typically, I um, go over a certain feature available in SharePoint and other applications. Today, we're going to talk about SharePoint, but uh, today I'm not going to uh, explain any technical features. Instead, I would uh, like to uh, explain different pieces of terminology that we have within SharePoint. The reason I decided to record this video was uh, because I find that too often my clients, my loyal followers, um, confuse the different, uh, you know, terms that we have available within SharePoint. For example, things like uh, a hub site or a communication site or, uh, you know, home site. Uh, so what I would like to do in this video is explain all these different um, different uh, terms, different pieces of terminology, and briefly show you what each one is all about. So in this video, I will go over and show you and demonstrate to you uh, four unique uh, terms that we have in SharePoint. Uh, a communication site, a hub site, a home site, and a root site. So I'll explain to you what each one of those things mean because they all mean very different things. And hopefully going forward, it will be nice and clear for you. So I will start with a communication site. Uh, a communication site uh, is uh, one of the uh, formal official site types that we have in SharePoint. So when you create a new site, uh, you um, can choose from the two primary site types and communication site happens to be one of them. So um, you can actually create a site from uh, a number of places. The most typical one would be uh, this SharePoint start page, which I will also explain to you as well. So let me uh, navigate uh, to my uh, SharePoint start page in the upper left hand corner. Uh, and any user can do this. In the upper left-hand corner, this is where users can create sites. Obviously, there are many other locations where you can create sites from. Uh, you can, you know, your SharePoint admins can create it from the SharePoint Admin Center and, you know, a number of other places. But this is the screen that everyone will get to see. And these are the two site types, two major site types uh, that we have in SharePoint, a team site and a communication site. I'm going to go over the communication site, but I will probably mention a word about a team site as well, since we're here as well. But what is a communication site? A communication site is the type of site that you use for one-way information sharing. So this site that you see over here, this is a communication site type. Essentially, uh, this happens to be uh, the site uh, that is kind of the main internet uh, site. Uh, with news announcements, links, all that employee face and stuff. And uh, because the objective of the site is one-way communication, um, I have used a communication site template uh, to create uh, this particular site. And this is essentially what it looks like. When you create a communication site, you get uh, no left-hand side navigation. It actually appears on top. And this is the look and feel that you get. Uh, let me show you another example of a communication site. And uh, yeah, here is one for human resources. Uh, again, this is an HR employee facing site where HR can share news announcements, links, uh, all the HR stuff, handbooks, etc. Uh, again, as you can see, no left hand side navigation, and you get uh, essentially um, this nice looking site for one way information sharing. Uh, the second site type uh, that we have in SharePoint uh, is the team site. And here's an example of that. A team site is used for two-way collaboration, all right? And uh, first of all, it uh, has the left-hand side navigation, but also the most important difference is that those team sites, they're connected to Microsoft 365 Group and Microsoft Teams, so you get much more than just a site. Uh, but back to the communication site. So let me actually go ahead and just to uh, briefly show you uh, the... Uh, different templates that we have. So once you create, uh, choose the communication site uh, type, you have different templates to choose from. And uh, let me just choose this HR example. Um, this is what it looks like. Again, the objective here is one-way information sharing. 
and uh, a communication site is essentially is the site type you want to use for um, for those types of sites. And uh, you know, once you give it a name, it just go has uh, goes ahead and creates a site. And uh, at the end, you will get a site that looks like uh, this. Obviously, the look and feel might be a little bit different, but the layout uh, will be similar to what you see on the screen. The second piece of terminology I would like uh, to explain is something called a hub site. And I actually recorded uh, a pretty detailed video already, and I have a blog post as well uh, on my blog about hub sites. Uh, so if you're interested to learn more about this topic, feel free to check those out. But what is a hub site? Look, as you create all the sites, so uh, within the organization, let's say you created a number of uh, team sites for two-week collaboration. You maybe created a number of communication sites for one-way information sharing. A hub site is what unites it all together. Uh, because you see, when you create a site, uh, let's say you create, um, I don't know, human resources uh, employee-facing site, and maybe you created it as a communication site I just described to you, um, you really need the users to, to be able to navigate from one site to another, um, you know, with a simple click. Well, how do you do it uh, without common navigation? Well, that's what hub site uh, allows you to do. And uh, essentially, this thing on top, this is the hub site navigation. And the way it works, you create a site, typically, you know, a communication site, uh, which would be like a parent site. You register it as a hub. And uh, once you register it as a hub, it gets this extra hub navigation. And this is where you add all the other sites, um, you know, to that hub navigation. So as you can see, I am on this main site. I can go to maybe accounting site right now, or I can go to HR site or, you know, some knowledge base site that I have. As you can see, as I navigate from site to site, obviously my sites are different here, right? The, the look and feel, the security of the sites is different because I'm on a different site now, but the hub navigation stays, you know, consistent. Uh, this is what allows me to navigate from one site to another with a simple, a single, uh, you know, click. Uh, now, um, to uh, th there are several steps involved and there is a lot more to, um, you know, to hub sites. Uh, and like I mentioned, I did record uh, a kind of a separate a video on that. You can check it out. Uh, but just to briefly explain this to you, essentially, um, in order to in order to um, um, you know create a hub, you need to pick a site. Typically, it would be a communication site because uh, that's essentially um, uh, the type of site that will be available to everyone. And then you need to register the site as a hub and then associate all these other sites to the hub. Uh, so there are several steps involved. As I mentioned, uh, you know, go ahead and check out that other video that I have on my YouTube channel if you want to learn more about how to create, how to associate sites to the hub and what actually happens behind the scenes because there is a lot more that happens behind the scenes when you create a hub um, in addition to the common uh, hub navigation. Uh, so just to recap, uh, a hub is essentially uh, a, a, a collection of sites bound by the common navigation. And hub functionality is, again, a formal, the word hub is a formal, you know, piece of terminology within uh, SharePoint. Um, again, this is something that unites all the sites together through common navigation and a few other things. The third piece of terminology I uh, would like to introduce you to is something called a home site. Uh, that's very different from the hub site I just described to you. So what is a home site? You see what you can do within SharePoint is you can pick one site that will be kind of uh, the, the main site within your uh, SharePoint. Um, so as you create uh, hub sites, by the way, you can create multiple hubs. So for example, if let's say you are medium to large size organization, uh, you can have more than just one hub, right? You might maybe have a hub for each and every department. Let's say uh, human resources uh, has, I don't know, 20 sites 
all right, you, HR department has 20 sites, so you might want to create a hub for HR. You might want to create a hub uh, for finance department. You might want to create a hub for North American division. Uh, essentially, a hub would be a collection of all those different sites that uh, I guess you know belong to a given department, region, and so on. So you can have multiple uh, hubs. But typically, typically as an organization, you have one main uh, site, right? Uh, let's say typically it would be an intranet, you know, site that is kind of the most important, the main site within your SharePoint. This is the site where uh, everyone, no matter where they are located, in which region, which country, uh, you know, what role they have, uh, this is the site that you know, where everyone can read, you know, kind of the main news and announcements, you know, access official information and so on. And there is a functionality available uh, within SharePoint to pick that one site and register the site as a home site. And when you register the site as a home site, you actually get uh, a lot of additional, uh, that site gets a lot of uh, additional advantages. Uh, for example, the news that you post on the site, they become kind of the most important news uh, that have been promoted uh, throughout the Microsoft 365 uh, ecosystem. Uh, when you register a site as a home site, you can also embed this you know, home site inside of Microsoft Teams through Viva Connections. Uh, now, uh, I actually, uh, again, recorded a video and uh, wrote a blog post about uh, the home site and Viva Connections. Um, so feel free to check those out. But just to briefly explain to you um, how this uh, home site works. So uh, in my tenant, uh, all right, I registered this particular uh, site, which is actually a communication site. I created a communication site for the internet. And uh, what I did, I uh, went ahead and registered this site as a home site. Now, let me briefly show you kind of the steps that I did. Uh, I have already done it uh, previously, so I'm going to open my uh, admin center. And um, actually, this option just moved from SharePoint Admin Center to Microsoft 365 Admin Center, but I'll still show you where it used to be. So if you go under settings, this is how we used to register the site as a home site. We uh, There was an option here uh, to input the URL all right, of the site and um, essentially um, this registered the site as a home site. And you could only do one uh, home site, essentially, for the whole tenant. But now they recently moved this um, option to the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. So let me navigate there. It actually brings me over here. So uh, as you can see, I registered this site as a home site uh, through, um, uh, through this option. And uh, essentially, um, so by default, you can only register one site as a home site. But if you um, if you purchase a additional, you know, additional features, uh, additional licensing, you can actually have multiple home sites in case maybe if you are a very large global organization. In my case, I only have one home site. Uh, and like I mentioned, the home site gets uh, lots and lots of advantages uh, compared to the regular site, like the news have been promoted. Uh, etc. But one of the biggest advantages of the home site is that you can then uh, do this Viva Connections uh, configuration and embed that um, home site inside of Microsoft Teams. Let me show you kind of the end result. I have already done all the necessary steps. Uh, but if I go to my Microsoft Teams, so here is uh, my Teams application where um, you know I have a number of Teams and so on. And then once you set up the home site, once you configure Viva Connections, it actually installs an, uh, an internet button inside of Microsoft Teams. And look at this, I clicked on the button and you can see that same internet, that same home site you saw in SharePoint previously. And this is great because this allows the users to pretty much with a, a single click, um, you know, navigate from the Teams, from you know, group chats uh, to the internet in case if I need, they need to look up something, maybe information on the internet portal. So there is no need for them to open another browser and navigate to the, uh, you know, to, to some other URL, some other site. 
uh, and the internet is pretty much uh, embedded automatically and visible uh, from inside of Microsoft Teams. So just to recap what I covered so far, so far I covered the communication side. This is just the site type that we have for one-way information sharing. I also covered hub sites, and a hub site is just a way to unite multiple sites, many different sites through common navigation, and you can have one hub, uh, within your organization, if you're a small business, you can have multiple hubs. Uh, it's just a, a way for you to unite, um, you know, to unite all those different um, uh, sites that you have. And then uh, I just covered uh, the concept of a home site, and uh, essentially this is the uh, the single most important site within your uh, organization that gets additional uh, benefits and privileges uh, that I just demonstrated to you. The fourth piece of terminology I would like to go over uh, is something called a root site. Uh, let me explain what it is. Um, so look, as you create additional sites, whether they're communication sites or team sites, they get this, um, you know, this extra, you know, suffix uh, at, the, at the end of the URL. So typically your, um, you know, your site URL will be your domain name, right uh, that you assigned when you uh, created a microsoft when you it created a microsoft 365 account uh, then it would say dot sharepoint.com and then forward slash sites forward slash whatever the site name you gave uh, when you created that site and if i navigate to my uh, sharepoint admin center you will see you will see lots and lots of sites that i have in my tenant all right, and as you can see, uh, all the sites, uh, no matter what the site type is, they get this additional suffix, uh, forward slash sites, forward slash the name of the site. And uh, that's just the name and convention that we have within, the, uh, within SharePoint. However, uh, each and every tenant uh, also has the site just like that, as you can see. You see, uh, uh, this is it. No suffixes at the end. This just happens to be just the, you know, your tenant, you know, domain name dot SharePoint dot com. Let me click on this. So, uh, what is the site? Uh, this is actually called the root site. The root site. Uh, this is literally the first site that got created when you, uh, your organization created a Microsoft 365 account. Uh, when uh, whoever, you know, uh, let's say your IT department, somebody from IT, uh, you know, uh, created a Microsoft 365 account, uh, right, uh, obviously with Microsoft. And, um, you know, at that point of time, uh, they had to assign the, the domain, all right, uh, the domain, essentially this front portion that you get to see here. Uh, to the URL. So at that point of time, uh, when they have chosen this tenant, um, you know, name over here, at that point of time, this uh, root site got created. Uh, and this literally was the first site that got created uh, in, um, in your tenant. And any um, additional sites that um, your IT creates or uh, maybe your users create in your tenant, uh, they have all these different suffixes at the end, all right? So all of these other sites, as you can see, all these other sites that I created in my tenant, uh, they have this additional, you know, suffixes. Uh, once again, back to this site, this is the root site. So um, uh, look, you don't need to use the root site. Typically, uh, right, m many organizations start using this root site and upload some documents. Um, you don't need to use this root site at all. I mean, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day what the URL is, all right? As long as, you know, people bookmark or remember that URL, uh, they can access it. It doesn't really matter. However, what I usually like to do, um, because it's nice and short address, uh, I like to use this URL for the main internet site. Uh, again, most likely your users will you know, will bookmark this URL. They don't need to remember it anyway, but because it's such a nice and short address, doesn't have any other suffixes that users need to remember, it's just pretty much your domain name .com. I typically, typically when I work with my clients, I like to use this particular URL for the main 
uh, internet, um, uh, you know, internet site. So what ends up happening actually, um, you know, typically this would be a communication site, right? I, I, uh, I typically set this root um, site as a communication site, something we learned today in this video. Then I built a hub site out of it because, you know, typically, right, even though this is the root site, um, you know, the, the main site, um, um, you know, I also want to connect the other sites to it, all right? So we need to register the site as a hub site. And then what ends up happening, uh, the same site might also be set up as a home site because if the client wants, for example, the site, uh, this internet to be embedded inside of, uh, you know, Microsoft Teams, then we need to set up that Viva connections. And as I just mentioned, uh, in order for this to happen, this site needs to be uh, pretty much uh, to, to be registered uh, as the home site. So here you have it. All these four pieces of terminology I explained today, they could be all, you know, um, uh, all, all happen at the same time, right? A communication site um, could serve as a hub site. It could also uh, be the root site, and it also could be a home site in case of Viva connections. So this were the four pieces of uh, terminology that uh, I, I wanted uh, to make sure you are clear on. I, I do want to go over one more piece of terminology while we're here. I kind of already went uh, to this um, you know, page in the beginning uh, of this video, but if you click on the Microsoft 365 app launcher, you're going to see uh, the SharePoint icon. And a lot of users, um, um, you, you know, call it SharePoint Home or SharePoint Internet. It's none of those things. The official name for this uh, icon is SharePoint Start Page. And when you click on this um, SharePoint icon, uh, this is what you get to see. And uh, now this page, um, this is called SharePoint Start Page. So not to be confused with any other pieces of terminology I covered in this video. This is called SharePoint Start Page. And essentially, at the moment, uh, its functionality is pretty limited. It just literally shows you the sites that you visit on a regular basis. It shows you the sites that you follow. It shows you a bit of activity on each and every site. There will be additional functionalities added to this um, SharePoint start page. Maybe we might get a new name for it. Who knows? Uh, but as I record this video, um, you know, Microsoft announced that they're, re you know, essentially... Um, making changes to this page and they're going to revamp it completely and we are going to get some additional functionalities here. So I'm pretty sure I will record the video on that uh, later on. But for now, just wanted to make sure that you're aware that uh, this is not a SharePoint home, this is not a SharePoint hub or, uh, or anything else. Uh, this uh, icon over here uh, leads you to this page and the official name for it is SharePoint Start Page. All right, so uh, that's all I really wanted to mention in this video. Hopefully you found it useful and informative. Uh, in the description, I will make sure to include an article that I wrote uh, some time ago covering the same uh, terminology I covered in this video. So feel free to check it out. But for now, thank you very much for watching. As always, happy to see you on my blog, sharepointmaven.com, as well as my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Goodbye.